Hello and welcome to the Video Zone. I'm sitting here surrounded by some old friends of mine. It seems like forever since they've been out and causing mayhem, but as you've just seen, the puppets are back in Puppet Master 6. It was great fun coming up with this new story, and soon the puppets will return again. Coming next from Full Moon, we have a bizarre twist on the killer toy theme called Blood Dolls. The dolls are unlike anything you've ever seen. Mark Williams, who worked on Puppet Master 6 and Shrieker, is creating the dolls, and the film will be out a little later this year. Subspecies 4 is finally coming out also later this year. Ted Nicolau wrote the script, which brings back Radu, the subspecies, and many of the characters from Vampire Journals. We also have toys, DVDs, and many other things to watch out for. And as always, I hope you enjoy the rest of the video zone. The wait is over. After four years of rest, the puppets have returned. But this time, someone else pulls their strings. Go then. The mysterious Dr. McGrew. So join Full Moon as we take a look at how the cast and crew try to avoid the curse of the Puppet Master. For this newest chapter in the Puppet Master saga, George Peck, who played Dr. McGrew, becomes the new Puppet Master, determined to uncover their secrets. We're trying to create perfection. Take a look at Blade over there. He never tires, never hungers, knows no fear, tells no lies, feels no pain, has no secrets. And what is man except a being at war with himself? But not Blade. Mm -hmm. He has no hidden motives, no secret self. He is purely and perfectly what he is. In fact, I think the world would be a better place if we were all like him. And then there was that part that just said, hey, you know what? You can just go anywhere you want with it. You can be a mad man. <laughs> Watching Bill Hickey in the original certainly gave me ideas. It was certainly the old, you know, the old genre of horror films, uh, you know, the Boris Karloff, the uh, Bella Lugosi types, those type films. Yeah, John Carradine, yeah, they came to mind. You may be the first of a new race of beings, a superior race. You may not understand what I'm doing, but in the long run, it's for your own good. Caught in the middle of the mayhem was Emily Harrison, who plays McGrew's daughter, Jane. She is fresh home from college, seen a little bit of, you know, the city life, coming back to the country, and um, she falls in love with this cute little guy named Robert, and um, along the way she realizes that her dad isn't the um, ideal father that she thinks that he is. She discovers his ruthless plan. What I really wanted to do was to give Jane just a little bit of an edge, just a little bit of a seductress kind of thing. So um, I was, that's really what I was looking forward to, was putting a little spin on this sweet little innocent girl. Make her a little more interesting to watch. I had a dream about you last night. I was uh, still in college and you were my teacher. I was yours, I don't know, it's kind of confusing. I like the way you kissed me the other day. I've, um... I gotta get back to work. Newcomer Josh Green, who played Tank, wasn't the only object of Jane's affection, but the target for Dr. McGrew's experiments. 
the character was was a good build-up, good character type, uh, kind of quiet, shy, but had points where he was feely, uh, had some emotion with with some of the characters, and had showed a uh, great display of anger and, and and also some loving and caring sides. So it was it was good. First time you meet me, I'm kind of to myself. I check out the scene. I don't really talk too much, and, and it's kind of a the uh, character tank. He just sort of keeps to himself, keeps quiet, and, and surveys the scene and and learns from watching. Um, the transformation of, of the character, how they, they uh, the Dr. McGrew wanted uh, a perfect person to have no falls or, or basically change of, of moods and how this person, he thought his inside was his true self rather than the outside. And um, how they brought that out into a character or into a puppet was kind of fascinating. You see, I did I did Tank not only had to deal with being turned into a puppet, but also with bully Joey Carp, who was played by Michael Guerin, found out what it's like to be on the puppet's bad side. It was my first day of shooting. I showed up at the set and didn't really know what to expect or what I was, you know, I, I had an idea, um, but I didn't know I was gonna die that day. And um, basically a lot of blood, a lot of screaming, and it was <laughs> a really interesting uh, first day to say the least. When I am killed by a tunneler, it's quite, it's quite a scene to be sitting on a workbench all by yourself as an actor, and have this puppet drilling you you know, between the legs, and everyone's watching you, and you have to pretend that you're dying, and uh, or act like you're dying. And, and a couple of times, there was a uh, few funny takes where <laughs> the, the puppeteer and I would just started laughing and basically stop before the director said cut. Parker. And action. Once again, Mark Rappaport's Creature Effects team supplied the deadly stars of the film, some of whom took a real beating. It was just so sudden. He was a tough fight, but uh, I think I won. Is he officially dead forever? I don't think so. While Mark Williams was brought on to create some of the more unusual effects, my main chore in the film was building this little guy here, which is this guy and this guy, the same guy. This is known as the Matt Puppet, we call it. Uh, this is the character in the film. He's obviously Dr. McGrew in the film is turning people into puppets. And this was kind of a failed experiment, uh, where he was trying to attempt to uh, turn somebody into a puppet and it didn't quite work well. So uh, I had to combine quite a few elements for this little guy here because he's not supposed to be like a human being who's kind of been shrunk down. But also, he's kind of half puppet, because if you look on this side of him, this kind of white side, he's a little bit more puppetized on this side here. Plus, uh, the character's been burned. Dr. McGrew tries to destroy him, so not only did he have to look half human, half puppet, but he also had to be burned, too. So there's quite a few elements to be able to put into this guy. I built two of them for the film. This here is the mechanical uh, little puppet that actually does its, its movement and everything. And this one here in the glass case is the stunt puppet. It's just a simple cable puppet um, looked very effective on screen. I, mean, I was just, I was, a lot of people were pretty creeped out by it. In fact, the, um, the lady who played the, the part in the film, Emily, she, well, while she was holding the puppet, while we were getting ready to lighting and everything, she was kind of creeped out by that because I'd be moving him around and be talking to her with the puppet. I'd be actually activating his little mouth and everything and, and you know, making little comments and stuff. And she was just kind of like, she didn't want to hold the thing. She was really creeped out by it. The whole time we've been working with inanimate puppets. I mean, they were just, just stuffed puppets. And this one had been wired, and so it, it really moved, and it really looked around, and it really squirmed in my hand and reacted, and it was a little scary. There's a couple nightmare sequences where uh, Tank, the character in the film, he keeps waking up thinking that he's 
been turned into a puppet or he starts every time he wakes up he's a little bit more puppetized so i built these items here this is a leg leg stump here which is kind of like supposed to look like a carved out piece of wood with the dowling this is actually foam it's actually squishy foam that i had to paint to, to kind of look like wood with wood texture and this for the uh the second nightmare sequence is his chest he wakes up throws his covers off off and he finds that his chest is been turned into kind of like a puppet. We blended into the actor and then had him in a fake hole through the, the bed so that you know, it would look like he'd wake up and then his chest would be would be these things. And we were underneath this, um, turning these little gears and kind of moving these little things to make it look like, like a clockwork mechanism, like he's becoming a puppet. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, that's working. Okay. All right, here we go, let's cover up. Curse of the Puppet Master. The puppet's new bloody reign of terror. That's only the beginning from Full Moon. In this place, there is a secret. The hell is that? Six have come here to stay. Is this a hospital? It's been empty for something like 50 years. One has found the key. To unlock the mystery. Somebody in this place has stumbled onto something, and they're getting close. Trapped within its walls. Fifty years ago, something happened here. Seven people were killed by something. Now, the others must find a way out. It's not the same lock. Somebody replaced it. Before they become its next victim. Shrieker. If you hear it, it's too late. A scientist gone mad has created a way to bring our oldest fears to life. You know their names. You know their faces. But you've never seen them like this. Serves. I was significantly larger. You see, we need a girl to bring you all up to normal size. We four shall find this girl. We nightmares, made flesh, shall walk the night again. What the hell is this? Ah, uh, it's just one of them things. At the Pony Valley Sewage Treatment Facility, strange things are surfacing. Honey, I gotta tell you, when I first looked into those two pairs of baby blues peeking out at me from that bottle of denatured alcohol, I thought of you. Open the box. It's not human. She's sneaking behind my back with that gauche 
undiscriminating collector of medical garbage, Napoleon Lazar. I say, if you can't beat him, join him. It's not an animal. Don't move, little froggy! You hold! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Come back! In fact, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. You two want to be left alone? I think we do. So what do we do now? Simple. All four of us take a little ride over to Lorcas and get back your gooba. Mm -hmm. It's hideous. No one is leaving here until my specimens are returned. specimen back devious <laughs> depraved hideous I mean somebody correct me if I'm wrong here but this is not normal in Andre Toulon's haunted attic two of the puppet masters most fiendish creations have broken free in sizes that will startle you. Full Moon Toys proudly introduces a shocking new line of action figures with Blade and Six Shooter. Now you pull the strings of the two biggest stars from the Smash Puppet Master video series. Strike a pose and help Blade do battle with a hand that switches from stiletto to hatchet. And eyes that light up the night. Six Shooter will always be on target when you aim his six arms, each one packing a chrome pistol. Then, on the rampage soon from Full Moon Toys, are the Totem and Tunneler. Blade and Six Shooter. The new Puppet Master action figures are attacking your toy and specialty stores now. For more information, check out the Full Moon Toys website at fullmoontoys.com. For more information about Full Moon and our films, write to Full Moon Pictures, 8721 Santa Monica Boulevard, Suite 526, West Hollywood, California, 90069 or visit our website at fullmoonpictures.com. And for fan club and ordering information, call our toll-free number, 1-877-315-6666. That's 1-877-315-MOON.